how to make a fab using Stitch Artist 3. Let's learn how to make one using, I think we're just using one, level one here. Um, as we go along, it may pop to me that we're using a higher level, but I think it's just one. We already know how to add our name. We did that on the last one. And now this is how to do it with Stitch Artist 1 and Enthusiast. So what first thing we're going to do is we have our name written. Now we're going to go up to Utility. And if you have Enthusiast, you're going to see this wonderful option of adding a knockdown stitch. And it's going to have a certain density and so forth on here. This really isn't that important to us because we're not going to keep it as a knockdown. But hit OK. And you can see you have a really nice outline of the doodle. And it, it does have a lot of nodes, though. So we're going to go up to Create Outline, Reconstruct that, see if we can get rid of some of them. And we got rid of some. I would actually get rid of some more of these guys. But I'm not going to take too much time doing that. Now, just like with the other one, we're going to want to have our start and stop over in this direction. Now again, we're not going to need this knockdown. What we'd like to do with this is we'd like to make this a run stitch. So we clicked up here on the run stitch in the stitch area. I'm going to bring this through three. All right. Now just like the last time, I'm going to use a fob that I already created as a template and I'm going to Command C or Control C with the PC and Command V or Control V and bring that snap fob over. I'm going to line it up here. See how I did? Pretty good there. All right, so now we have all the components just like we did the previous time. What we'll want to do is let's take this one here highlight on that one and highlight on the first one. And I do that by holding the command button down and clicking on the second one. Again with a PC that would be control. And I'm going to create, design, combine it so it's just one. Okay. So here we have, first what's running is our outline. And then we're going to want to Tie it at the entry, not at the exit, because we're going to continue on with this one. Let's make this one the same color. That's a light. All right. And just like the previous time, we're going to Command C or Control C, Command V, then Command V or Control C or Control V and Control V. These. Let's move these down there, okay? So what we have is this in the wrong spot too. So we're going to take two of these, and we want those to be up here, above the name. This one here is, this first one is going to be our placement. The second one is our tack down of the top vinyl. Let's make that another color so the machine has a good way to stop, give it an almost black. And then on the run, we want to make this one a double, okay? And that way that's going to tack that down securely. Now we are going to next stitch out duro. And then finally, we're going to put a piece of vinyl on the back of the hoop and stitch together the front and the back and add the placements for the snaps. Now when we do this final color, we'll want to make that different as well. Let's give it a red. And on the run, we could do a bean, we could do a shishiko, we could you know get creative, do what you want. Let's do this one a bean. I'm going to make sure that we have our start and stops and our tie downs where we want them. And then this can also be, I didn't change it on the other video, but this can also be the same color as the tack down. We don't need a stop there. Um, I didn't want to confuse you with the color change there. So now there we have it. We're going to take a quick peek at that in our 
stitch simulator. I went a lot faster on this one. I went a lot slower on the first one, so I think that that would be fine for you. Let's take a peek at this. Placement, pack down. The name is going to stitch. And we're adding vinyl to the back of the hoop. And we have the final stitch out, stitching it together and adding the placement lines. And there you have it. There's how I do a snap tab using both stitch artist and enthusiast. Just a little bit easier than the way um, I created the first one. Now let's talk about making a fob that has a grommet instead of the tab. So let's go through here and get rid of all our tabs. And actually we're going to get rid of our two of our outlines, just keep the original one. Now I can, you can see here I also kept the placements for the um, snaps. All I could do as well if I didn't want to save these is go, go into the shapes library and pull a circle. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this really close to here and make it a little bigger. Quarter inch by quarter inch, just slightly bigger because I want my um, 5 sixteenths by 5 sixteenths. I have a 3 sixteenths grommet that should fit nicely in there then. Okay, so let's scooch it out just a little more. We want some overlap. And then what we're going to do is we're going to combine the outline and the circle. First thing we're going to do is create design, combine design. So it's together. Now let's change the color of the outline to match the circle, make them both red. And then using our union button up here again, let's click on that. Let's see what we have here. Get rid of the original circle and the original outline. And now we have this union of both the outline and the circle. I would again go up into here and create outline. And I'd like to reconstruct that, hopefully getting less circles. Looks like we got more this time, which is an odd one for it. I would play with this and delete some of those circles. But I'm not going to do that right now. We're just going to continue. And the reason I would do that is because every single place there's a circle, you also have a um, needle stop. So it's a lot of needle stopping without it needing to stop. Or because it punches into every one of these nodes, if that makes sense. So even if I have this set at, at three, it doesn't matter. The sti stitch still has to stop here and go here and go here. And then it may go here just for the three and then go here. So you're not going to get the stitch length that you're looking for if you have this many nodes. So I would definitely go in here and erase some of those, get rid of some of those and do some adjustment. But let's go on. And here is the running stitch we're going to put around. For the placement, we like it to be a single. And again, it doesn't really matter if I have the ties there. Sometimes I add them, sometimes I don't. It's going on the stabilizer, so it doesn't really have to be on. Um, here, I'm going to click on here, and I'm going to Command C, Command V, Command V, or Control C, Control V, Control V, to make two additional copies. Once I have these copies, I want the second copy to go right underneath the first. I am going to add the ties, and I'm going to change the color. At this point, I want to check the run, and I want to make this a double. Then I have a name here, and that's perfect. And now, let's take this last one, put in those ties, change the color and let's make this one a bean stitch.
Now let's see how this stitches out in the stimulator. A simulator. <laughs> Here we go. Outline, pack down, name. Then we would add the last piece of vinyl to the back and the bean stitch around, holding them both together. And there you have it, guys. Um, three different ways to make a snap pop. And if you have any questions, please do put those in the comments. Also, I will add links to my Hug Longer Digitizing Help group on Facebook, as well as a link, an affiliate link to Embrilliance. If you want to take a peek at what Embrilliance has to offer, if you don't already have a digitizing program you love, I highly would suggest this. Um, and I will be looking in on questions that you might have on the videos. Thanks.